Hello there, my name is Dr. Ruth Johnson. I'm a geologist at the University of Oxford at St. Anne's, St. Peter's and St. Edmund Hall. And what a geologist does is we read the story that's written in the rocks. And no matter where you are in the world or in the UK, there's going to be some interesting building stones in whichever town or city that you live in. What I'll do is I'll show you some quick tricks and secrets so that you can figure out what's actually going on in those rocks. There's only actually two kinds of rocks. There's rocks that are made of grains, like sand grains. And they're mostly sedimentary rocks, and that means that they're made of sediments that were either eroded from other rocks or crystallised on the seabed or something like that. And sediments is just things like mud and sand and clay and silt. The other kind of rocks are crystalline rocks, and they're rocks that have cooled from a liquid magma or lava, or they've been a rock that's been heated and then recrystallised. And that's metamorphic rocks and igneous rocks. We'll have a look at some of the things you might find in a granular rock. So this rock we're looking at here, here's my hand for scale, has lots of grains in it. You've got all this yellow stuff and then all of these little white grey bits. And those little grey bits are actually bits of shell. You can see there's lots of different types of shells here. There's a snail. These are oysters and clams. And we can see that there's other things going on. You can see that these lines going across here. And what those are is underwater ripples called cross bedding. So there was a current going along here, going in this direction, and as it went, it was dropping off grains and they were forming up into a dune. But only the front of the dune gets preserved and you can see how it's migrated along the seabed. We can see up here though, they're not as big, so maybe the currents had calmed down. And here, there's just a flat line, so maybe there was no currents at all. What we could be seeing here is the tide going in and out 165 million years ago on the shores of tropical Oxford. Some lovely examples of cross bedding. Think how big the waves and currents were that made these. Look at all of these shells as well. These shells have been stained with iron, so that tells us there might have been some interesting chemistry going on. There's a snail. See, even within the same type, even though these are all the same type of rock, these are still all the Jurassic oolite, there's different variations in it. Because if you think about modern environments, they're extremely variable on a small scale. And that's what we see when we look at rocks too. Up here we've got lots of chunks of rock, uh, we've got lots of chunks of fossils, and these fossils were all smashed up. So that tells us that this is probably a pretty stormy environment. So if you imagine the Bahamas today where there's every year there are hurricanes, we get these round ones as well, and these are called crinoids. These are the stalks of a creature that was like a starfish that stuck to the bottom of the seabed with a stalk. So we can even tell what the, the climate and, and the weather was doing 165 million years ago. So you imagine all of those waves smashing up the shells and mixing up the sediment. And that's what we've got here. And so that's something you can look out for in rocks around your hometown. So this rock here on the paving stones is called the millstone grit. This is really common and it's used in paving stones all over the UK. So I would be surprised if there wasn't some in your town. <clears throat> and we can see we've got this pattern here that's where the paving stone has weathered away. So the millstone grit is a sandstone because it's made out of sand-sized particles of quartz and other minerals that have been eroded from ancient mountains that no longer exist. And they got carried by huge rivers that were kind of like the Amazon and the Mississippi and came down across England and dumped them in the Midlands and across North Yorkshire as well in these huge river deltas. So if you imagine all of this mud and sand pouring out of the river delta and piling up on itself and then getting chopped up by waves and currents like we saw in the limestone, and that produces this sort of texture. You'll see as well that some of these look like little tubes, and that's exactly what they are. These were probably little critters burrowing through the mud because that mud would have been full of nutrients and organic matter and lots of nice things to eat. So the millstone grit and the tropical deltas existed about 320 million years ago. This is from the Carboniferous period. So this is a stone that's in most English towns and cities as paving stone and sometimes as building stone. So keep a lookout for it and those kinds of patterns. And remember, you've got those nice little round sand-sized grains, which you can feel if you rub your finger across it. And that's the sandstone. 
we've got more of the millstone grit and you can see all the different colours and patterns left by the oxides. These are called lithe gang rings and it means that iron rich fluids and oxygen rich fluids pass through this rock after it was deposited and squashed. You can see all, it's also seen sparkles from all of the quartz grains and the clay flakes that are in this rock as well. Here in Oxford we get these cobblestones that are made of sandstone and this sandstone is really special because it's about half a billion years old and originally came from North Africa. So if you can see here we've got these cross beds on this cobble and these little shells. Those shells are from the Cambrian period when North Africa was a shallow tropical sea. And then that shallow tropical sea got turned into a mountain range and the sand got turned to stone. But about 250 to 200 million years ago, that sand got eroded, those mountains got eroded, and these cobbles got distributed all over the UK. And then during the Ice Age, the glaciers picked them up and carried them back down to the south, and they got dumped here. So have a look at cobblestones, because they might well be made up of bits of North Africa. I'm here in a local shopping centre now, because a lot of, in the UK, and further afield, shopping centres all tend to use the same kind of material as the flooring, and that's a kind of granular rock from Italy. It's another kind of limestone, but it's a bit different from the limestone that we saw earlier. It's very fine grained, you can't see the grains in it, so you can't tell it's granular, but it does have lots of really cool fossils. Let's have a look at those. So we can see this curled fossil there. That's the shell of a sea creature called an ammonite, and it had a beautiful curled shell, and the creature that lived inside it was like a squid. You can also see these fossils here, they're called rudists and they were a type of clam that had a long tube shaped shell that they made into big, collected together into big reeves. This is a belemonite and this is the ballast, like the hard shell at the end of another creature that looked like a squid. You can see here as well all of these blotches are little squiggles and they're burrows left by different creatures digging through the mud for food. So the little white ones are probably from worms and the big blotchy ones are probably from shrimps and little lobsters. There's a really big rudist, had a lid like this and the creature popped out and filtered its food out of the sea. In these rocks, we can see we've got this gold brass shiny colored mineral called pyrite. And that means that while this rock was still mud on the seabed, that there were bacteria eating the iron and pooping out the pyrite. So you can get a lot of information about, about the actual environment they were deposited in. This is probably the remains of a sea creature and it's been burrowed into by lobsters and shrimps and things to get the food out of it. Here's another common granular rock that's made out of sediments that you find all over the UK and all over the world called Portland Limestone. This is often used in big official buildings, so here it's used in the Ashmolean Museum, but especially government buildings, and all of these are oysters. Just think how many oysters had to pile up over time to build all of this limestone. Because the Isle of Portland is pretty big. That's a lot of oysters. Another type of rock that's really common, not just in the UK but all over the world, is red sandstone. And so we can see here all these little bobbly quartz grains and some feldspars probably in there as well that were eroded from ancient mountains. In the UK, the most common one that you tend to find in building stones are the old red sandstone and the new red sandstone. So the new red sandstone is only about 200 million years old, 250 million years old. But the old red sandstone is about 400 million years old. And the thing that makes them red is the sand grains, when they're sat on the surface, get coated in iron oxides. And those iron oxides get cooked as the rock gets buried and go red and become a mineral called hematite. And the reason that they're able to form oxides is because there's no water between the grains when it's sat on the surface. And that means it was in an arid environment like a desert. You can't see any sedimentary structures in this one. This is an example of the new red sandstone from the Triassic and the Permian period. Because the cross beds are way too big. These were originally parts of sand dunes. So think how big sand dunes can get. So when you find a red sandstone, you're actually looking at part of an ancient desert. So we've seen the UK when it was a tropical in the Jurassic and in the Carboniferous, and now we're seeing the UK when it was subtropical and a desert in the Permian and the Triassic periods.
We've got plenty of granular rocks. Let's have a look at some crystalline rocks. This is granite. This is a common crystalline rock that's used in building stones all over the world, especially in the UK where we've got loads of it up in Scotland. It's also used as tabletops, kitchen counters, and you'll actually also find it in a lot of shops as counters as well. You can see here we've got these nice long crisp pink crystals, there's a good one, of a mineral called orthoclase. And it's pink because it's full of potassium. There's one that's cut in half and you can see it's got lots of little zones inside it. There's another good one that has lots of little zones inside it. And then we've got these grey see-through minerals and that's quartz. We've got some dark minerals in here, but they're not all the same. So these platy ones here is a type of clay called biotite. And if you poke that with steel, it'd crumble and it's soft, but probably best not to go around poking people's buildings. And these long black needles are a mineral called hornblende. We can see here as well that there are different zones in these orthoclase feldspars, and that means the composition of the mineral was changing as it was grown. So this kind of granite forms when rock is melted, usually sedimentary rocks, because sedimentary rocks contain lots of potassium and aluminium, and that's what you mean, need to make orthoclase. And you do that by squishing them between two continents. So this type in the UK, this type of stuff is called the Peterhead granite, and it's from Peterhead up in East Scotland. And what happened about a billion years ago is there was a continental collision and it formed the supercontinental Rodinia, and a lot of sediments on the seabed got squashed and melted, and then they blobbed up inside other rock and cooled very slowly, making these large crystals. And because it's hard, it got eroded out, where the soft rock around it got eroded, and people use it as building stones. It's nice and hard, and when you polish it, it looks really pretty. You'll also get white granite. And white granite has a type of crystal in it called plagioclase, which is related to orthoclase. It's basically just orthoclase with much, where the potassium gets replaced with aluminium. Sorry, potassium gets replaced by sodium and calcium. And the white granites tend to form as the last dregs of minerals from magma chambers that have produced different types of lava. So this used to be liquid rock deeper than the earth. And down here we've got this dark crystalline rock, and this is a gabbro. It's made of plagioclase, which is the white version of orthoclase. And this isn't hornblende or biotite, these are pyroxenes. So this is a piece of ancient ocean crust. So even though they're both made of crystals, they have quite different chemistries and they tell quite different stories. This is ocean crust that was dragged up onto the land in a continental collision. And this is sediment that was squished by continents and melted in a continental collision. This is a much better example of a gabbro. You can see that the crystals are much bigger. There's big plagioclase and labradorite crystals, which we'll see a better example of in a minute. And then all of these pyroxenes. And next to that we have this rock that's called a breccia. So this is a rock that was in an earthquake and has been broken apart. But we know this earthquake happened deep underground because we've got these bits there where the rock's gone kind of squidgy. And where it's squidgy we call it a myelinite. And where it's broken apart into big chunks we call it a cataclastite. So this is another, this type of marble is another one that's common around the UK that you'll see. It even still has some remains of the shells in it. That's not a real rock though. It does look like one, but that's made in a factory. So be careful. So this rock is one that's really common in this decorative building stone around the UK. And it's also used as armour stones along the coast, especially on the east coast. It's called lavakite. This is another crystalline rock. It's similar to a granite, but it has much more iron in it. And you can see the iridescent colours of these lovely minerals called labradorite, which is a type of gemstone. So labradorite is related, a feldspar, which means it's related to our orthoclase and our plagioclase. But what happens 
is it grows in wet conditions and so the crystals grow as these lines if you look there closely you can see all those thin lines and they're stacked in angles and they reflect the light in iridescence similar to mother of pearl so that's one of my favorite rocks to look at and this is very common around the uk and there's another big chunky bit of granite so this is from the later stages of the continental collision so after the continents have collided and the mountains sagging back down and everything's relaxing that's when you get lava kites produced but they're actually kind of a, still a bit of a mystery so become a geologist study lava kites and solve the mystery